This is a breaking news alert. Got some breaking news now with all the general division in our government, major spying revelations for political purposes, deadlock in the Senate, threats of the government being shut down, and a GDP imbalance between the Federal Reserve Banks. We turn to our economic strategist, Charles Thorngren, who just penned a new blog post at noblegoldinvestments.com entitled Bonds, Yield Curves, Recession, Oh My, and in it, he presents a detailed roadmap which attempts to show us how to avoid a mega event that they are predicting for the United States economy. He's also got uh, a major announcement. Charles, welcome back to the program. Thank you. It's glad to be back. Charles, uh, now you got this recent blog post out, caught my eye, Bond Yield Curves Recession, oh my. Now in it, like I said, you present a rather detailed map which attempts to show that there's a major event on the horizon for the United States economy. Now, before we get into all that, you heard what I, my lead in here about the current political climate in Washington, D.C. Now, I, I personally haven't seen it so toxic before. Uh, what, do you, what do you make of the, or predict now, the fallout will be for average Americans with all this division? I've, I mean, the infighting, uh, Republicans and Democrats, it's, it's insane. What do, you, what do you make of it all? It, it really is insane. I, 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 I've never lived through a period where there was this much division within the nation. And, and sadly, um, it's politically motivated in all aspects, and it's being um, um, propagated by political parties as well. It, it's, it's a point where I, I almost feel like I'm reading a Tom Clancy book as opposed to watching the news. And it really uh, puts us in a bad light, too, at a time when we really can't afford that. We have so much work to do. Uh, America needs so much attention, whether it's infrastructure, whether it's reforming tax codes. There's so much to do that this fighting makes no sense. And, well, and in the Senate, of all places. Yeah, and, and you've got, uh, well, the Senate, of course, you've got the, the Neil Gorsuch uh, nomination, which now they're talking about filibustering it, which will be a first in American history. And now you've got the Republicans coming back saying, well, I guess we're going to go ahead and pull the nu nuclear option and just right. require a straight majority vote to get uh, the, this, uh, the Supreme Court nominee picked. Um, but I think what, what else is on the horizon here and what has been unfolding uh, since the weekend is the Susan Rice revelations that yeah. she was the one who ordered the unmasking and then disseminated the information among all the intelligence agencies and Obama uh, reduced the, uh, the security clearance so that these things could be revealed uh, so that these people would not have, get into any trouble, so they could say, oh, it's legal. What, what is the fallout for the, for, for the Democrat Party, if anything, I mean, of course, the, we know the Trump administration is going to continue to fight this, uh, but this is just another black eye. Uh, do you agree? I do, and it really puts uh, the two-party system in a bad position because there's certain things that you just shouldn't do. You know, uh, we raise our kids to, to behave and to, to act appropriately, yet we see that completely thrown out the window in the government, and it's really um, a situation that does this country no good. The idea of having two parties, it's a great system. Checks and balances, it's important. It really is. But when you have one branch whining and crying about everything that doesn't go their way and then taking it even further to purposely create issues of, of security because there is national security issues involved with this too. Um, I don't believe that they randomly found the conversations with President Trump's cell phone through just a, a regular search. Mm, right. That, that's, that makes no sense. Uh, right. That's in the haystack. So there was a deliberate attempt to find the information and then to disseminate it and release it. Yeah. yeah. That's a horrible scenario. It really is. And, it, and it, it invokes things, like you said, now we're talking about a nuclear option because there's such division. At some point, you got to get along. The country has to run. The election has been won. You didn't win, right. but it's time to go to work. It is time to go to work. And now, <clears throat> let's take a look at this blog post you've got here. That um, this was, you say this is not an afterthought uh, or a marathon session of caffeine and sifting through go uh, and sifting through government reports. So what you say here, the Federal Reserve Bank of New York 
now cast estimates GDP first quarter at 3.1. The forecast from the Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta GDP now has been brought to 1.3. The Federal Reserve just uh, raised interest rates. They're forecasting more. What uh, break this down in layman's terms and why why we should uh, how this is going to affect us? Right. Yeah. And and let me say, yes, that is my idea of fun going through government reports. Um, I know that doesn't put me in a, in a great uh, cool position there, but that is what I do for entertainment. Um, but when you're looking at those numbers, that gross domestic product, that's how our country grows. This is how we support our government. This is how we support ourselves. So when you have a system and this is now the Federal Reserve System, it, it's not just any bank. This is a very select group of banks that are in charge of helping determine the course of the nation and the Federal Reserve. So should you see some differences in the numbers? Yes, obviously. No one does the exact same calculations. There's different criteria. But when you see that big of a gap, it's a really big red flag to say there's something wrong here. Either someone doesn't know what they're doing or someone doesn't want us to know what's happening. Now, so, Charles, we're, we're taking a look at the, at the image from the blog post here, uh, GDP Now, Evolution of Atlanta, GDP Now, Real GDP Forecast for 2017, Quarter 1. Uh, can you break down what this, what this graph means for, uh, for our viewers? What are they looking at? They're looking at, and that blue band that you see in the center, that's the envelope, okay? So that's typically where you see, you know, small corrections in the GDP. Things can happen, um, you know, numbers come out, uh, commerce numbers come out. So it affects things. But you look at that graph and that's where you should see some balance. If it's in there, you're, you're floating within a normal parameter for where the GDP is, okay? So when you're looking at this graph, you see where the Atlanta Fed has made that sharp correction. Now it's well outside of that band because when you're talking about GDP, you're talking about, you know, billions and billions of dollars. So a little bit means a lot. When you see a range that goes beyond your 10 forecasts up and down, there's a tension that needs to be drawn to that because there is an economist that sees something that doesn't make sense to them. And when you see that graph pull all the way down below 1%, you have a huge indicator. When you look back through history, some of your biggest corrections in the economy, and depressions, recessions, are indicated by a lack of GDP. There's no product happening. There's, there's no domestic production. There's no wealth accumulating for the United States. So that's why these numbers are important. And for us to be at the point nine, um, when they were looking at it, is a very telling story. You see these types of corrections where that GDP has an effect on bond yield curves. Now, bond yield curves are a um, magical beast that most people don't understand. Um, but really what we're looking at is the cost of borrowing money, short-term and long-term, okay? Because that's how the government gets by, they borrow money. We know this, that's why we have debt. So this indication flattens out our yield curve. And why that's an important factor is you see a flattening of the yield curve before every major economic correction. We saw it in, in 2000 with the tech bubble. We saw it in 2008. Most of us still feel that correction with the so-called housing bubble. It was more than that. We saw it before the depression. So these are very strong indicators and it lets people know that they need to take precaution. There is trouble afoot. Now, Charles, since most of us uh, look at our portfolios in terms of the Dow, what exactly does all that mean for the Dow? Great question. When you see a scenario like this, typically when you see the things begin to unwind, the stock market is the thing that takes the hit that most people understand and feel. With this, with the debt that's out there, you can expect to see a correction around 54, 55%. So you could see the Dow headed into the 10,000 mark, which unfortunately means about 54, 55 trillion dollars worth of wealth will disappear from the world. That's what kind of effect this has on world markets. Can, can so, you, can you re- repeat that again for me? How much money are we talking about here? Yeah, we're talking about $54, $55 trillion, and that will disappear from the world markets. We have effectively become um, an, a world where we're all interdependent to one another. So one market has an effect on other markets, especially when it's our market. 
But yes, that number is fifty-five trillion. It's a ridiculous amount of money. Oh, and when you look at that too, I mean, you look at where do you go? And it used to be real estate was a good option, and precious metals, which I believe is still a great option. Except real estate is about to suffer because of the interest rate going up. So you, you have a scenario where you're left with very limited choices. And, and this is why I give um, you know estimates of, of metals going, especially gold, going up about 2250 wow. maybe 2300 in the course of the next year. So we're talking with Charles Thorngren with NobleGoldInvestments.com. The link in the description. Uh, Charles, let's talk about some of the solutions. You know, oftentimes we get caught up in all of the the charts, and you know we, we've got to be able to navigate these things. And of course, uh, your your entire um, blog post revolves around the reality of predicting and navigating these these facts. So tell us how Noble Gold Investments can help our viewers at home. And I want to remind our people too who are watching this, the reason we do these interviews is because we want to make sure you're prepared for whatever lies ahead. And that's the bottom line. We, we care about you, we care about your families, and we bring experts on like, uh, like Charles here uh, to give us these solutions. So Charles, talk about some of these solutions your company provides. Oh, perfect. You know, we do offer precious metals and we do it in, in multiple facets. Um, we have metals for the delivery to your house, you know, um, and that's part of being prepared, um, you know, food storage, things like this. There's preparation. When bad things happen, you want to be prepared. So you have that option. The other option that we offer that most people forget about is their retirement accounts. And for most people, most of their wealth is held there. They've been putting that money away. Uh, and most of that is tied to the stock market. So what we do is we help you release yourself from the stock market. Take a percentage of that portfolio, get it invested in another IRA that allows precious metals so that you can have gold and silver there as the ultimate form of protection when we see these events happen. I should point out, you actually sent me some here and I'm holding it up on screen. I've got a one ounce uh, piece of gold here. Thank you for that. And uh, two ounces of silver. I'm, I'm a big silver fan, and I think uh, a lot of people think silver is undervalued as well. Uh, what's, your, what's your thought on that? It's absolutely undervalued. You know, when we talk about silver, and I, I've been doing this for a while now, uh, a little over two decades, um, we used to talk about ratios. Ratios were the big thing, and, and silver always traded around 16 to 1 to gold. Right now, it's about 70 to 1. So when you're looking for an option that has the best short-term growth, uh, silver is your, your choice. That's where you want to be. Um, the great thing about silver is we'll see a lot of movement in it. And if you're moving funds from your IRA, those metals are stored for you. Okay. So you don't have to store all that silver yourself. That can be a little uh, cumbersome at times. Silver can be. Yes. Yeah, silver can certainly be bulky to store. Uh, you've got, speaking of storage, I think you have a, a big announcement as well um, regarding yeah. some storage uh, in Texas, is that? That is correct. We are the first um, company that's going to offer independent storage in the state of Texas, the first and only. And what exactly uh, does that mean? That means that your people who, who purchase precious metals have the option of having it stored in the state of Texas as opposed to Delaware or as opposed to Canada. And it's a great option for people. It's very difficult when people think of Delaware. Um, it may be far from where they're at. Texas has a different mentality too. It's a lot more comfortable for people. They understand Texas and they better than they do Delaware. And, and as being the only na the only company that's allowed to do this in the nation with truly independent storage, it really sets us apart. Um, you know, there was that big hubbub about Texas building their own depository run by I the state. That. Yeah. And, and it was great. We were there. Uh, we were involved in some degrees. Um, but again, politics got involved. The state got involved. I won't say that it won't happen, but it won't happen soon. Um, the, the building of, of a $30 million structure that may or may not hold the metals that uh, the Texas pensions have, it's not really enticing for people. So we went and did the next best thing. We approached our, our depository, the, the, the depository we use, IDS, and we said, we need to offer people this. This is what they want. How do we make this happen? And it's taken us a while, but we've worked it out. We've gotten it through. And starting on May 1st, our customers will be able to choose uh, the depository in Texas, the IDS depository in Texas. 
to store their precious metals. Now, here's First, a question I'm sure a lot of our viewers are asking. Okay, so what's, how do you audit the, you know, people are like, hey, man, there's no gold in Fort Knox, so why right. should we believe you guys? You know, that's a question people are going to ask. So how do you answer those people? And it's a great question. The thing about it is that this is an independent depository. So it's not owned by the federal government, okay? And I go there on a regular basis. I'm always making sure for all my depositories that I do audits, that those metals are held in segregated accounts. They're owned by you, the customer, by their IRA. We take the steps of actually um, confirming your metals delivery to them. They're going to do a little video. They're going to show you your metals. It's going to be stored. You have the option actually to go there too and say, I'm going to be here. I want to see my metals. You set an appointment because it is a depository. You can't just walk up. It's not Burger King. Um, so you set an appointment. Wait, wait, wait. wait. So, actually, so, so we can't have it our way? <laughs> well, not all the time the IRA, play. unfortunately. <laughs> Our way would be, and I'm like, I'm like everyone else. If I had the option to store it at my house, I would have it at my house. I just don't want to pay the taxes on it. I'm just going to be honest about it. So sure. I store it at a depository because I'm not willing to, to pay that penalty and, and pay that increase in the taxes. So what, what do you mean? Why is there a penalty if you store it at your house? Because then the government can't determine whether the metals have been moved or not. If it's in your IRA... They have to be able to know that it's still there not being used, that it hasn't been sold. It's the only way they can do it. They'll tell you it's for this and that reason, safety. No, it's about taxes if, if we break it all down to the reality of it. It always is, Charles. Sure. It always Absolutely. is. <laughs> the government wants their pound of flesh, and we're coming up uh, into tax season, the dreaded tax season. Absolutely. Oh, man. <clears throat> I am not a fan. I am not a fan at all. But, uh, Charles, I want to thank you, though, for, for providing us with these solutions and, uh, and providing our, our viewers with an option uh, to convert their IRAs and, of course, have, having their gold stored in either a secure location in Texas uh, with your company or being able to take it on delivery. And that's something that, uh, you know, of course, there's the tax issue you just mentioned, too. So. Uh, any uh, final thoughts before we go? I mean, you talk about this major event heading up. Uh, any final thoughts on that? Yeah. When you're looking at what's happening, give us a call. You know, there may be questions. Um, interviews are really hard to get into the nuts and bolts of it and all the, the details. But if you need more information, if you have questions, you call us. My team here is very well versed. We have a lot of experience helping people. Um, what's the number to call? It's right for you. The best number to give us a call uh, would be 877 8, 646-646-5347. 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8,